Hi, welcome to my channel, The Magic of Math. Today, I wanna to talk to you about how to find slope using two points. So first, let's review what slope is. Slope is the steepness of a line, and it could also be written as the ratio of the change in y over the change in x. So it's a ratio, or a rate, if you're talking about a specific real world problem, and more simply stated, we can say it's the rate of change of a line. So remember, uh, think about skiing, a ski mountain, and they have usually a green set of slopes, blue and black. That's talking about the difficulty because of the steepness of the slope. So thinking about a slope and how fast it's increasing, how steep it is or decreasing. Think about climbing a mountain, going on a hiking trail, and that steepness is the slope. So there's a formula we can use. So sometimes it's not um, practical for you to count. So you probably at a younger age learned how to do rise over run and you could just count on the coordinate plane, but possibly you're not given a graph or you don't have graph paper or it's decimals or fractions and it's not practical for you to count. So we're gonna give you a formula to use and I'm gonna review how to use this with you today. So here is the slope formula. In algebra, slope is referred to using the variable m. And here is our change in y, which is representing a point, a difference in the y coordinates of point one and point two. So these subscripts you see here, the twos and the ones, we're talking about point one and point two. So if you have two points that fall on a line, you can find slope. You could know 10 points on the line. You can pick any two points. It doesn't matter which two points you pick. I could give 20 students in a class all different sets of points, and if they do the math correctly, they're all going to get the same slope answer. So you identify one point on the line as point one and one line point on the line as point two, and you're going to take the y coordinates and subtract them, and then you're going to take in the denominator the x coordinates and subtract them. And the only thing you really have to pay attention to is these need to line up. So this needs to represent one point vertically and then remember you're subtracting and this has to be the second, the first point or the second point. The order doesn't matter, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to do this. So here are two points that I've been given. I don't know what the line looks like and I'm not even gonna graph it. I just know that somebody is telling me that this point and this point fall on a line and they want to know what the slope of that line is. So I have my slope formula ready to go. I'm going to identify the ordered pair 3, negative 20 as point 1, and the ordered pair 5, 8 as point 2. So now we're ready to use our formula. So in my numerator, my y coordinate of my second point, subtract, and notice I'm using parentheses because it's negative, the y coordinate of the first point, and in my denominator, the x coordinate of point two, subtract the x coordinate of point one. So if you look very carefully right here before we go any further, this represents the x and y of point two, and this represents the x and y of point one. So we're all set. Reviewing some integer subtraction Remember, subtract is add the opposite, so I'm going to rewrite my numerator. 8, add the opposite, so I have 8 plus 20, which is 28, and I divide by 2 because 5 subtract 3 is 2. 28 divided by 2 is 14, so the slope of my line is 14. Okay, at this point, I'm going to model four different types, because there's four different types of slope that you can have, and I want you to be able to see what the different slopes are. If you would like to try this one on your own before I model it, then go ahead and pause the video. If not, keep watching. So here we go. I need my slope formula. I'm identifying five negative three to be point one, and point two to be negative one, six. So now I'm ready to plug everything in to my formula. So my y coordinate, of point two, subtract my y coordinate of point one. Notice I use parentheses again when my x coordinate or y coordinate are negative. Now I'm going to the denominator, the x coordinate of point two, and the x coordinate of point one. Notice I'm subtracting the coordinates, and anything that's negative that follows the subtraction sign is in parentheses. 
One more thing to point out. Here's my second point, negative one, six. Negative one, and the six is above it. Five, negative three. Five is in the denominator, negative three in the numerator. So the common mistake that my students make is that they put the x difference in the numerator and the y difference in the denominator, and then their slope is quote unquote upside down. So just make sure you understand that it's your rise, which is going up the y-axis, over the run, which is the, the difference in the x-axis change. All right, let's do the math. So I'm gonna add the opposite again, six add opposite. So when I get that, I have six plus three, negative one, add the opposite. Remember this is subtract five, add negative five. Six plus three is nine, negative one plus negative five is negative six. I simplify and I get negative three halves. And I like my students to leave it in this form. So the slope of the line is negative three halves. All right, here's another one. Again, you can pause and try it on your own or you can stay with me. So I'm gonna write down my slope formula so I'm ready to go. Identify point one, identify point two. I'm ready to substitute in. The y value of point two, subtract the y value of point one, the x coordinate of point two, subtract the x coordinate of point one. So again, this is the first, the second ordered pair, four, seven. The first ordered pair, three, seven. These are interchangeable. You could have done in the seven minus seven over three minus four. We're gonna get the same answer, okay? As long as you identify one point for you to be point one and point two, it will all work out. So seven subtract seven is zero and four subtract three is one. Here's another mistake students often make. Use your calculator if you can, but zero divided by one. If I have nothing and I divide it by one, I still have nothing. So zero divided by a number, any number, is zero, okay? Students often confuse this with dividing by zero. But if you have nothing and you try to divide it into groups, you still have nothing. So the slope of my line is zero, and this would be a horizontal line. If you haven't learned that, you will learn that soon enough. All right, moving on. Here's my fourth example for you. And I'm gonna write down my slope formula. Again, if you wanna try it on your own, go ahead and pause. Identifying point one, identifying point two. I go ahead and plug everything in, noticing that my y coordinate of two over my x coordinate of point two, my y coordinate of point one, over my x coordinate of point one, and I'm subtracting. Two subtract one is one. Five subtract five is zero. One divided by zero is undefined. If I have one cookie, I cannot make zero groups. You cannot divide by zero, so you have an undefined slope, which you will soon learn, if you haven't already, that this represents a vertical line in the coordinate plane. All right. Two more things I wanna leave you with. Maybe you're given a graph like this and you're not sure about using rise over run. Remembering that you can pick any two points on the line. I could identify this as point one and this is point two and I could use the slope formula. If you're looking at a line of fit on a scatter plot, I could identify this as point one and this is point two. Some people might use this as point one and this is point two. That would be fine too. As long as the two points are on the actual line and you can identify their value, you're all set to find slope. So I hope this helps you, uh, reminds you or reviews how to find slope using two points. I hope you found this useful. Please subscribe to my channel and register for uh, sign up for notifications. And I hope you have a great day.